Tutankhamun's erection. The most famous Egyptian mummy in the world just got a little bit weirder. This is a discovery for adults, so some of you might want to cover your ears for this one. Scientists have just discovered that Pharaoh Tutankhamun was buried with his male organ erect at a 90-degree angle. Not just for fun, though. It wasn't just a prank by the embalmers. Things were very different back then, and everything was done for a reason. He was buried this way to squash a religious revolution that was started by his father. King Tut's father was Pharaoh Akhenaten, a man who was very hated in ancient Egypt. He tried to obliterate the old ways and the old gods in favor of a single god, leading to a civil war. Egyptians had been worshipping a pantheon of deities for thousands of years, but the odd pharaoh changed everything, commanding everyone to worship only the sun god as the omnipotent ruler. And after Akhenaten died, the young King Tut and his advisors made sure to change things back to the way things were. When King Tut died at the age of 19, he was buried in the Valley of the Kings. His tomb wasn't unsealed until Howard Carter discovered it in 1922, but since then, scientists have been poring over his remains to understand more about his reign and Egypt as an empire. According to Egyptologist Salima Ikram at the American University in Cairo, King Tut was buried with his male organ mummified in such a way that it was erect, pointing like a flagpole above his prone corpse. Salima believes that it was an attempt to transform King Tut into the god Osiris, lord of the afterlife. Even though King Tut ruled as a boy between the ages of 10 and 19, he worked hard to reverse the devastating changes enacted by his father. Salima thinks that when he died, the priests who buried him mummified Tutankhamun to look like Osiris as a further rebellion against his father's unusual laws. But get this, when his tomb was discovered and his mummy was removed, his mummified upright body part snapped off. Nobody knows where it is now, and many speculate that it was stolen. That means that somebody has the mummified member of King Tut in their own personal collection. How much do you think that artifact would be worth? And now for number 7, but first I wanted to give a big shout out to Avita Montgomery XO and Candy McGraw. Thanks so much for watching and supporting OE. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family. Blonde Giants of Catalina The island of Catalina lies off the coast of California. It's known mostly for its natural beauty and, of course, the Catalina wine mixer. But underneath the picturesque facade is a mystery that's been baffling scientists for years. On the island of Catalina in the early 20th century, the skeletons of blonde giants were found. It's as crazy as it sounds. Ralph Glidden, an archaeologist and treasure hunter, was the man behind this shocking discovery. He excavated a group of skeletons buried in shallow graves, and these skeletons belonged to a race of people who stood on average between 7 and 9 feet tall. Studying the bones revealed that they had distinctive blonde hair. But what in the world were blonde giants doing on an island in California? The mere fact they exist is enough to change everything you and I know about ancient history. It should come as no surprise that a discovery like this was rapidly swept under the rug. First came the storm of speculation in the archaeological community. Nobody could believe that giants were found, never mind on a random island. But after the shock came the dismissal. These skeletons were dismissed as either fabrications or misinterpretations. And now, Nobody knows what happened to the giant skeletons. They simply vanished. It's been so long that what was once accepted as a real archaeological discovery has turned into a myth. Speaking of myths, there's a Native American legend that explains the giant skeletons. According to the Northern Paiute, they battled against a race of enormous people who lived in California and Nevada. Oral tales passed down through countless generations say that the Saiduka or Saitaka were blonde giants who lived in North America before the Paiute. Only a few of them were left in ancient times, but warriors with the Paiute exterminated the remaining blonde giants with extreme prejudice. So could the bones that were found on Catalina Island have belonged to those defeated giants? Let us know what you think in the comments. The Sacred Ring A sacred ring was discovered on the body of a young Mayan who was sacrificed centuries ago. I say the ring was found on their body, but it was really found in a dusty pile of human remains. The sacrificed youngster was buried inside a jar, so today their remains look like what you might dump out of a vacuum cleaner bag. 
The incredible discovery was made in the ancient city of El Tigre. El Tigre is also known as the place of the lizard serpent. It was once a powerful ceremonial center in the religious world of the Maya. The city was occupied early on in the civilization's history, likely around 2,000 years ago. It then remained occupied all the way up until the Spanish arrived to do their conquering. It was one of the few Maya cities that wasn't entirely abandoned when the civilization collapsed around 900 AD. Contrary to what you often hear, the Maya civilization didn't completely disappear. There were cities, settlements, and groups that survived the apocalypse of a thousand years ago. The owner of the sacred ring was sacrificed between 600 and 800 AD. The ring was made of jade, which was extremely important in all Mesoamerican civilizations. Jade represented the peak of the social hierarchy. It represented fertility and the cosmos. Jade was important in religious rituals as well as in the arts. The ring would have been a very valuable piece of jewelry. Sadly though, this is where the researcher's knowledge of the sacrifice ends. Archaeologists haven't given any more details on the discovery. It was only made at the end of summer 2023. The ancient city of El Tigre is still being investigated with excavations that are ongoing. The Pizza Fresco who invented pizza? Your instinct is to scream Italians, right? If it is, you might be more right than you know. A fresco from 2,000 years ago has been discovered in the ancient ruins of Pompeii, and the fresco depicts what could be the first image of a pizza. This wasn't your average deep dish pizza. It had a few ingredients missing and a few extra ingredients people today wouldn't be fond of. According to the Pompeii Archaeological Park, the fresco shows a distant relative of modern-day pizza. It was painted in bright colors alongside a wine goblet. The ancient pizza would have been eaten with pomegranate or dates, and it was likely smeared in a pesto sauce. There wouldn't have been any tomato or mozzarella cheese since they didn't exist in Pompeii. The fresco was found in the ruins of a house that had its very own bakery. The pizza was likely part of an ancient Greek tradition going back to the 3rd century BC. Guests used to receive something called hospitable gifts. If somebody was visiting you, it was tradition to give them some simple nourishment. And in the case of people living in Pompeii, a hospitable gift included pizza and a glass of wine. How pizza evolved from a poor man's dish in Pompeii to one of the world's most famous foods is a mystery for another day. But be sure to keep checking into this channel for all the wacky and amazing discoveries being made around the world. The Warrior Woman a highly unusual burial was found on a small island near the coast of England, and there was something found inside the burial that's changed the way historians look at women in the Iron Age, specifically women's role in warfare. The discovery isn't recent at all. The Iron Age grave was found by a farmer on the island of Briar in 1999. Inside was a heap of treasure, relics from spiral rings to a lady's brooch. Two of the items were particularly interesting, but they were also confusing. There was a sword and a mirror. The artifacts confused archaeologists because it was tradition that men be buried with swords and women be buried with mirrors. The combination of these two things wasn't something anybody had expected. So who was buried in this grave and was given a sword and a mirror? Long after the discovery was made, scientists finally had an answer. They recently analyzed tooth enamel from teeth that were found in the grave, and they were able to identify the gender of the mysterious person. She was a woman, but no ordinary woman. She likely played an important role in primitive warfare. And according to biologist Sarah Stark, she wasn't the only one either. Other groups of scientists have been making similar discoveries across Europe. For example, a recent enamel analysis of an ancient skeleton dubbed the Ivory Man has proved that the name needs to change to the Ivory Woman. All across Europe, skeletons that were previously believed to belong to warrior men are being identified as warrior women. So clearly, ladies played a significant role in combat 2,000 years ago and beyond. Scientists don't know the exact role these warrior women were playing in history, but Sarah Stark said that she's hoping to study more burials to uncover the truth. Do you think it's possible that there were entire armies comprised of women during the Iron Age? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. And while you're at it, subscribe to the channel. Las Lunas Decalogue Stone 
The Los Lunas Decalogue Stone could be the first ever evidence of an ancient group of Hebrews living in the American Southwest. It's an artifact of such immense importance that I'm surprised more people don't know about it. The mysterious stone was discovered near Albuquerque, New Mexico, and it contains inscriptions that are written in Hebrew. The inscriptions are the Ten Commandments from the Old Testament. But what makes the stone so incredible is that it might predate Christopher Columbus's voyage to the New World by a lot. And by a lot, I mean 1,500 years earlier. If the dating is accurate, it means that Hebrews traveled from the Promised Land to North America before the Inca Empire ever existed. But let's take a minute to study the stone and see what it can tell us. It's a large slab of basalt that the Ten Commandments are written on in an early form of Hebrew known as the Paleo-Hebrew script. It's eerily similar to the more ancient Phoenician alphabet, which was used as early as the 10th century BC. Everything about the stone screams ancient. It's the discovery of the artifact that's not quite as convincing. The Los Lunas Decalogue Stone was found in the 1880s by archaeologist Frank Hibben. He claimed that a native guide brought him to the stone, where Frank found it in perfect condition. It then became an instant hit, but never saw as much attention as you might think. Even in 1985, when mineralogist George Morehouse examined the stone and said it was 2,000 years old, the relic remained ignored by mainstream science. Ignored, but not forgotten. Religious scholars have examined the stone over the years, and they found a lot of inconsistencies in the inscription. Although it is written in an early form of Hebrew, there are also Greek letters that were substituted for Hebrew letters in some place. And the worst part is that some symbols in the inscription weren't used until the Middle Ages. It appears as though whoever created the text did so with some confused knowledge of ancient Hebrew. So is it authentic? There's evidence that goes both ways. Skeptics say that ancient Hebrews would never have made grammatical errors in a sacred text. Then there's the whole medieval symbol debacle. But there isn't any real evidence for how else the stone arrived in New Mexico. And for now, it's still an unexplainable mystery. The Ishango Bone An artifact was discovered in the Democratic Republic of Congo that's been puzzling historians for decades. It's called the Ishango Bone, and it's dated to 20,000 years ago. Researchers think that it was a bone tool from the Upper Paleolithic Era, a period of time that was part of the Stone Age. But the truly crazy part about the Ishango Bone is that it may also be a mathematical device. If the Ishango bone is a mathematical device, it will be the earliest one ever found. The object itself is fairly small. It's a curved bone with a tiny piece of quartz that was fixed to one end. It may have been used for engraving, like a primitive pen. But the artifact itself has engravings on it as well, 168 etchings to be exact. It's covered in several series of marks that look like scratches, and some experts seem to think that the marks are tallies, maybe to count successful hunts. Others, however, argue that they were used for counting or for performing mathematical procedures. Now, you may be wondering, how was the artifact found? It was discovered by a Belgian explorer named Jean de Arzelin de Brocourt in 1950. It was recovered from an isolated part of the Congo, in a place that's hardly been touched by scientists. It was found near human remains and stone tools, suggesting that it once belonged to an unknown civilization. But without more expeditions into the Congo, there's no way to learn more about the people who once thrived there. Before we move on to our next story, there's one final theory I want to tell you about regarding the Ashango bone. Some scholars seem to believe that the bone could be an early form of a lunar calendar. The markings might not be for counting numbers, but for tracking days between lunar events. The Roman Head in Mexico in 1933, an archaeologist by the name of Jose Garcia Payon discovered a small stone head in Mexico's Toluca Valley, but it shouldn't have been there. In fact, the very existence of this artifact challenges everything you know about ancient civilizations. The tiny head, which is small enough that it can easily fit in your fist, was buried inside a grave at the site of Calixtla Huaca. It isn't unusual to find a carved head in a Mesoamerican grave. But this one was weird because it didn't look like anything that's ever been found in Mexico before. The statue appeared to have the face of someone from Europe. And to be entirely honest, it looked like the head from a Roman statue. Yet it was buried in a grave from sometime before 1510 AD. 
The Spanish didn't arrive in Veracruz, Mexico until 1519, and at the time this head was buried, nobody in Mexico had ever seen a European before. In 1961, Austrian anthropologist Robert Hein Gelden confirmed the head as having either Greek or Roman origins. He suggested that it was carved around 200 AD, and his hypothesis was confirmed by Professor Boehringer, the former president of the German Archaeological Institute. The Roman head in Mexico continues to be a subject of contention in the archaeological community. Even though reputable scientists have confirmed it as a Roman artifact, mainstream scientists have denied it. They call it a hoax or a fraud, despite there being almost no evidence that the head is fake. It appears to be real, proving definitively that the Romans had contact with the ancient Maya. What do you think the meeting between the Romans and the Maya was like? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.